This report brought to you by the Richmond Club, where investors and high growth companies meet. I'm Galit Solomon for the Richmond Report, and joining me today from Montreal is Peter Pascali. He is the president and CEO of Pyrogenesis. Welcome, Peter. Happy to be here. Peter, the last time we saw you, you were in Toronto to make a presentation to the Richmond Club Luncheon, and it seems a lot has happened since. So bring, up, uh, bring us up to speed. So Galit, quite a, quite a lot of news over the past six months. Uh, effectively, just to summarize it, uh, two of our business lines, we've lined up with multi-billion dollar uh, companies to help accelerate our growth in our mining and metallurgy, specifically with draw strike and added manufacturing, uh, specifically with uh, selling our powders into the 3D printing market. Okay, so very busy. Like you said, uh, a lot of this has happened over the, ne the last six months. Uh, let's dive into some of the details in terms of what pyrogenesis does. And specifically, let's talk about plasma, the fourth state of matter. For people who don't necessarily understand how it works and how it impacts day-to-day -day life, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, plasma uh, is probably the most abundant state of matter in the universe. In fact, it is over 95% of the universe is plasma. The sun is a plasma ball, lightning is a plasma. And you may have recalled your science school teacher describing three states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. You heat one up, it becomes the other. So an example of a, of a solid was a, usually an ice cube. You heat it up, it becomes water, a liquid. You heat that up, it becomes steam or a gas. When you take a gas and you heat it up even further, it becomes plasma. So plasma is the fourth state of matter. And what we have effectively done at Pyrogenesis is we, we've taken plasma, so it's like a, a heat source. It operates at very high temperatures. And we incorporate that into our processes as a heat source. And we find we, uh, we like its very transformative nature. It can, we use it to transform uh, waste energy or destroy waste completely. Mm. Uh, we use it to transform uh, metal into small spherical powders for 3D printing. So plasma is all around us. And what we've done is we've harnessed it in, um, in torches. So it's like a hairdryer, to, to, for lack of a better example, where a hairdryer you take, um, cold air and you heat it up, it becomes hot air. Mm -hmm. But in a plasma torch, you take a gas, you heat it up, it becomes a, a plasma. So it's like a flame that comes up the other side. And that's what we incorporate in our processes to, uh, to commercialize waste energy or wires to powder, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the clients you've been working with is the US military, is that correct? Yes, it is. It's been a long okay. standing client of the, of the companies. We developed a, uh, a system to destroy waste on board their aircraft carrier. They are looking for something very compact, very lightweight. Mm. We invested significant amounts of dollars into this. And we end up being the, um, the, uh, the uh, technology of choice. We're in the design of the US aircraft carrier. Effectively, what we do there is we destroy garbage on the aircraft carrier. As I said, we're in the design. So that, doesn't, that design doesn't change until the next class of aircraft carriers are, are developed and we might also be in, in there. But anytime they want, to, they're, they're going to buy an aircraft carrier, make an aircraft carrier, they'll come to us and ask us to pro, uh, provide our system. We've mm -hmm. already delivered two and it's public that we're expecting another order for two, roughly 12 and a half million dollars or so. It'll be our largest order to date any week now. Right. Um, so this is not confidential, it's out there, it's public. Uh, we expect it any week. We should have gotten it by now, but due to the slowdown in the U.S., uh, uh, it's been it's been a few, a few weeks delayed. Right. Okay. You know, uh, let, let's move on to speaking about investors. And and clearly, one of the the um, most important elements for investors is to look at the person who is at the helm of a company, and that is you, of course. So, can you tell us a little bit uh, more about your background? My background's in finance. I used to do mergers and acquisitions for the Fortune 500 or Fortune 1000 in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. um, I then went and worked for a, uh, a boutique in New York City. This was all in New York City. Uh, I went to work for a boutique in New York City, which uh, essentially um, uh, managed companies, uh, fixed them up, and then took them private. I'm sorry, took them private or took them public. Uh, it, was a, it was a mergers and acquisitions boutique a company. And then I came upon an opportunity here in, in, in Montreal on one of my visits where there was a small company, about four people, uh, was doing something very interesting, something called plasma. And I saw how plasma has, uh, was capable, of, 
of doing many things. And so if it was probably developed, you'd have multi-legged stool, each one independent of each other. So I liked how you could develop it into a company, which is which, what we've done today, which is effectively um, several very independent business lines using Plasma. Right. Uh, and, I, and that's what excited me about this. So that was my background. That's basically how I, I fell into Pyrogenesis. And I grew it from a four-person company to what it is today. Yeah, amazing. So, so in, in wrapping up our interview today, I'm just wondering if you can tell me, why do you uh, suppose this is the time for investors to take note of your stock? Well, usually uh, when people ask me this question in an interview, I tell them, uh, you know, I prefer them not to buy the stock and to look and figure out what we're doing once they become comfortable. But uh, over the past few weeks, what I've been saying is there's a huge disconnect with what we've been press releasing and what our stock price is at. Uh, our stock price hasn't yet moved, so the news hasn't really filtered down to investors yet, or the impact or the, or the, the importance of the news hasn't really yet filtered down uh, to the investors. Effectively, what you have is in our two business lines, multi-billion dollar companies doing their own due diligence. Mm. And so I'm not going to suggest that investors shouldn't, but they can take comfort that each one of these companies uh, have done so. And they found that uh, they want to throw their, 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 their efforts behind our technology, which accelerates our growth. Um, and here's, an, here's a, a, a thought. For these multi-billion dollar companies to get involved with pyrogenesis in these business lines, they're not doing it for $10,000 a month. Mm. It has to move the needle for them. So if it moves the needle a bit for these multi-billion dollar companies, it's off the charts for us. Right. And right. we haven't done it just in one business line. We've done it in two separate ones. So um, from an investor's perspective, I think that should give them some confidence that at least if they spend the time to do a little bit of due diligence, it might be well worth it. Okay. Very good. Peter Pascali of Pyrogenesis, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks a million. This report brought to you by the Richmond Club, where investors and high growth companies meet. If you've enjoyed this video, please let us know. You've been watching the Richmond Club Report. If you've just come across this channel, please feel free to subscribe. I'm sure you'll find a lot of interesting and profitable investment ideas around here. We'll see you again soon on the next video. Cheers, guys. Have an amazing and profitable day.